What is rhythm? Does anybody know the dance, the cha-cha? Does anybody know that dance, the cha-cha? Or at least heard of it? Okay, so one of the rhythms, the main rhythm of the cha-cha is that it goes one, two, cha-cha-cha, three, four, cha-cha-cha. So maybe many of you have heard that rhythm. The rhythm is really established by what happens when, because we know the main steps. There are the main steps. Yes, two, three, exactly. And it's a little bit different than tango, which is generally on a four count, uh, a three count or a four count. So cha-cha uh, is on the two, three count. And so the key in understanding the rhythm is not understanding the main step, but is understanding what happens when the market steps back. How often will it step back um, before it steps forward? And I would actually, I'm not going to get into this because that could open up a huge can of worms. Um, and that's, that's actually how I kind of view Elliott Wave as worms. Um, but I would not regard Elliott Wave as a rhythm. Uh, I would consider it too subjective. I'm actually talking about rhythm from a quantitative perspective, which is different than LA Wave. LA Wave is really not quantitatively based. It's more subjectively based. You can't base LA Wave on pure numbers. It's not pure objective. <laughs> Gives me worms too. Yeah, exactly. So that's just my thoughts on LA Wave. You'll get to read more about my thoughts on LA Wave in a book. But... So to really establish the rhythm, if you are the main dancer, if you're the lead dancer, you're really concerned of not how is somebody going to make the main step, because we know what the main step is. It's predictable. In this case, it's short. The rhythm is when it takes a step back, what are the chances it's going to take a step forward? Now, in cha-cha, we know it's a 2-3, so we basically need to know, okay, after so many steps, it's going to step back forward. Now apply that to the market. The rhythm is the step forward is the directional step. Since we're in a downtrend, that's the normal forward step of this rhythm or this trend, this dance. What we really need to find out is what is the rhythm when it steps back. In other words, when it moves counter trend. In this case, it's very, very easy. This is one of the most beautiful textbook examples. In fact, I use this all the way from here down. That's why I'm using this this pair in this time frame because I was trading it from here down. And so I was using frequency and rhythm to trade this. Now what is the rhythm? Well, to find the rhythm, you only need to look at the blue candle, the counter trend candles. Now, can anybody look at the blue candles and figure out, okay, so the maximum rhythm, or in other words, the maximum step back that this pair is taking is three candles, two days, two candles. So, and we're going to apply this concept of rhythm further around and out. So, what we know is, is that so far to date, this thing has only taken three candles or three steps back before it takes a step forward. That's very powerful information for us to have. Not only do we have the frequency, but we have the rhythm. In other words, what are the chances that after a blue candle or two blue candles or three blue candles, that the market is going to continue to sell off again. That's very useful information. This is part of the BR trading, behavioral response trading. So if you look at all the blue candles, we've counted it, there's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Actually, it's not 12. There's more than that. There was 12 in the little sequence we did before. Let's count the total number from top to bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Did I do that right? 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 candles, 19 blue total. Out of all the 19 blue candles, only two of them, actually a total of three of them, were followed by another blue candle. So that, and what was that? This blue candle was followed by another blue candle. This blue candle was followed by another blue candle. And this blue candle was followed by another blue candle. Now, since I got the HotCom program locked on this chart, can somebody divide 3 by 19? I can't pull up the calculator program. I can do it, but then HotCom is going to lock me back out of it, and it's going to go right back to the chart. So, well, somebody, it's, it's got to be about 15%. Uh, 6.1. Uh, okay, 
So we're talking about basically 15%. Ooh, my math was good. 15.7. Okay, so about 15% of the time, if we see a blue candle, will the market be followed by another blue candle? If you knew that you had about an 85% chance after witnessing a blue candle to that it was going to be followed up by another red candle, and the red candle is with trend, would you feel pretty confident about selling on open of the next candle? The formula is 3 divided by 19. The number of blue candles divided by uh, the number of blue candles that were actually followed by another blue candle. So 3 divided by 19. 85% of the time, I'd be willing to bet all of you would be very excited to know that 80, you'd have an 85% chance that the market was going to sell off. And you should. Because look what happened. Every single blue candle from here, I just jumped one, two, three, seven candles. I just jumped seven candles ahead. Every single blue candle was followed by another red candle. That means that the next Let's see, you would have made profit here on the open this candle. You would have made profit here on the open this candle. You would have made profit here on the open this candle. That means three candles back to back after very large blue candles and a possible bottoming formation. When the market was thinking, shoot, maybe bottom here, you would have been making money every single day after a blue candle. We're going to take this a little bit further. But being able to understand frequency and rhythm gives you a different insight to the market because it goes beyond structure. It's talking about prices relationship to time as well. That's the other component to price action.